Thanks for staying with us. Now, the problem of leadership in Nigeria and some parts of Africa has been identified as the major reason why we have failed, uh, sorry, why we have failed or failing institutions that have not measured to the exact expectations of African, um, of the African people in achieving both personal and collective success as a continent. Effectiveness and efficiency in performance of African people and, the, and institutions would highly depend, among other things, on the leadership so how much attention do we pay to the quality of leaders we are raising and do we as a people understand the role of leaders on our overall success and how has leadership impacted the building of successful institutions and people in Nigeria and Africa now let us hear what you have to say remember you can join the conversation send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate one eight zero three eight four six six three so I'm going to bring in Kemi in a minute but I just want to hear your thoughts you know when you think leadership when you think Africa when you think Nigeria hmm. what comes to your mind hmm I'm still thinking <laughs> <laughs> leadership in Nigeria is um is a traumatizing thought for me. I don't even have words to put to it because I'm yet to see people that really represent what leadership is about. Mm. Being the example, being forthright, being people of integrity, people that listen to the people that they're leading. So things like that. So it's a, it's a problem for me just thinking about leadership and com uh, connecting it to Nigeria as of now mm -hmm. because of the way things are presently in our country and we're looking for leaders we're looking for people to look up to people who can be the example that people would see and know that there is hope for generations to come and even begin to see themselves as leaders mm -hmm. mm. how about you for me i think the primary concept <clears throat> as far as i'm concerned for leadership is being able to serve um, and that brings in the servant, servant leadership concepts, and that is what we do not have here at all. Um, there's supposed to be a place for empathy, and then that brings in emotional intelligence. And for the longest of time now, we've been having conversations around emotional intelligence. I mean, we attended an event Yesterday, for one of yeah. our guests to that launched a book on emotional intelligence. And I, I started reading the book already. I'm almost far gone. Um, and I think it's a book that everybody should have. Mm. Um, there was something that came to mind all through the conversation yesterday, and it had to be around um, the people you are connected Leading. with. So if I read that book or I'm reading the book, I'm doing everything humanly possible within my capacity to ensure that I groom myself to get to that point where I've got empathy and I've got a level of emotional intelligence that helps me. And the next person is not doing the same thing. Well, how does that work? It, it's... Is, it's just going to be frustrating to me because I think it takes two most times. Um, it's just like in a relationship. One person is working, trying to ensure that um, the relationship goes forward. You're, you're saying the right things. You're doing the right things. And the other person is not making an effort. Yeah. It's going to be chaotic. You're going to be frustrated at the end of the day. So I, I think that leadership in Nigeria is chaotic, like she has said. It's worrisome. Um, it's not just about, when we say leadership, now, it's not just about the politicians. It's across board. Mm -hmm. Even in corporate organizations, you realize that people don't even understand their job roles mm -hmm. and understand what they're supposed to be doing as servant leaders. Yeah. So it's a broad conversation, I think, that I just very, really very want to broad. listen you know, to the guests. Really you know the funny thing yeah. about when they say everything rises and falls on leadership, mm -hmm. I've actually seen it practically, um, uh, what's it called, manifested mm -hmm. in certain, certain things, yeah. you know. When they say truly things do truly rise and fall on leadership, that is a statement of fact. But let me bring in our guest. Kemi Onoba and George Joseph is an associate partner with McKenzie & Company, where she serves um, public and social uh, sector clients as government, development institutions, major philanthropic organizations, etc. across West Africa on economic development and human capital development topics. She has over 12 years of experience in human resource management, change management strategy, and transformation delivery across several industries, including financial services, telecommunications, manufacturing, and healthcare. She is an alumnus of Convenant University and holds an MBA <laughs> from Inside Business School, where she was elected as valedictorian. Very brilliant, somebody. She is currently the president of the Convenant University Alumni Association. I, call it, I think they call it Koala, yeah. and holds several other leadership positions. So, welcome with us. She's live with us in <laughs> studio, Kemi Anabanjo. 
By the way, let's do a special congratulations mm -hmm. for being elected second time in the row. <laughs> The I, I told my producer to please show us your picture. <laughs> that very correct picture of you. Yes, yeah, that's it. She has been elected. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, you know, um, so Kemi, Thank you. I've always been having this thought to discuss leadership. And um, you have been on my mind for a while around this topic. I don't know why. Maybe you, you help me understand why <laughs> you've been on my mind. Okay. You know, but I mean, you listen to, normally you listen to Elsie. And this is the reality, the challenge that we're having today. We have a leadership gap in this country. It's, I mean, it's so glaring. With everything that happens, look at the collapse today, the building collapse. You would know that this is failure on leadership. You know, whoever was probably the engineer on that project, he was the leader on that project. What was he doing right? What did, not, what did he not do right? You know, so it, it cuts across, like Elsie had mentioned, yeah. it cuts across every single sector from the smallest cadre to the highest um, um, positions of power. So if you look at leadership, you know, and institutions and people, how do you connect the pieces, you know? Why are we having failing institutions? And why are we not seeing people successfully evolving, mm -hmm. you know? What's that gap? <sighs> it's, it's, I mean, <clears throat> deep sigh. Uh, when you sent me the, the notice, I was like, this is a hard topic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, of all the topics, why this topic? Because uh, Norma said something, it's traumatizing. You know, every day you, you live the reality, especially if you live in Nigeria, you live the reality of failed leadership. And I love what Elsie said. It's not just the political uh, title holders, as I like to call them these days. Because leadership, I think, is... It's such a strong word, you can't like throw it around and label. So it's, it's just called them title holders. It's beyond that. It's all the way down to the desk officer in a parastatal somewhere that should not have approved a building permit, for example. Yes. That should not have issued a building permit. That person is uh, getting paid to do their job, but they're just not doing it. So at the end of the day, I mean, are you going to blame the governor? Not necessarily. The governor cannot look at everything. The governor cannot be held, I mean, ultimately is accountable, but you can't be held responsible for what, you know, this level zero officer did not do. Mm -hmm. And so I think the challenge is not just a, it's not just a title holder or, you know, top level leadership, it cuts across. And at the base of it is really self-leadership, mm -hmm. like to the individual, like what else you said, if I'm taking personal responsibility for growing myself, for growing emotional intelligence, for becoming more competent on my job, for all of those things, and the next person is not doing it, then it, it's, a, it's a building that will collapse, right? Because you need the foundation, you need the building blocks mm. to all be strong enough to take on the next level, middle management, and then top leadership, and then, you know, uh, what we see in our day-to-day -day lives. So it's an individual problem. It's each and every one of us, it's the mentally deranged person crossing the road. <laughs> it, it really not is. Not thinking of safety. Not thinking of safety. It is the um, parent who is careless with their child when they're walking on the streets and, you know, holds the child on the side of the road and not uh, on, the, on the pedestrian side. It is the um, person who is mixing adulterated drugs, drugs or an adulterated food. Mm. Mm. right in the market mm -hmm. why is that person doing that if everyone just did their bit leadership will be slightly easier so i think it then comes down to the individual what is self-leadership are we really taking responsibility for our lives our actions um and what we do that's on one side how do we fix it you know that's the question then that that's where you have inspirational leadership right mm. so you have one person who decides and commits to a cause and says i will be I will, different. I will be different. Oh. And I will try as much as possible to role model and emulate this. Um, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, you know, an institution is pretty much the lengthened shadow of an individual. Hmm. So one person can actually make the change. change. It is tough, it is hard, but it's possible. Look at NAFDAQ. We talked about um, adulterated food. Drugs, and all. Yeah. Professor it took Adora a queen she decided, to make that difference. Exactly. She decided, I'm going, to, I'm going to fight this with my life, essentially. That's what she did. She says, you know, I'm going to be a servant leader. Mm. 
I'm going to, I believe in this cause. I believe in uh, protecting human life at all costs. Mm. I believe in um, ensuring that children are protected from uh, capitalists. Because we know it's about the money. money. Absolutely. Yeah. The numbers. The money. It's about okay. the numbers, right? I will protect these people and I will do whatever I, I need to do. She had that vision. She had that drive. Know, drive. She had sheer will, mm -hmm. like that woman and literally grit. knocked down doors <laughs> with her hands, right? And great to make it happen. So yes, there are, there are pockets of if we have inspiring leaders who commit to something, the institution will follow. NAFTA became effective because one woman decided we are going to do our jobs well. Hmm. So in the middle we'll of... Elsie, let's just um, go on a very short break. I think we have a commercial. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're having an amazing conversation on leadership with Kemi and the role of leadership in building um, successful institutions and people. So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 8 one 803 So before we went on a break, Elsie, you were going to come in. Yes. Um, so this question came to mind when we mentioned that um, this is the second time you are um, becoming the elected president of the association right and I mean I, I just simply want to ask why you decided to run again and I'm asking because we're talking leadership and Africa and Nigeria and what we see and what we know and we've gotten to that point where we would always expect someone who is already in power to also want that power over and mm -hmm. over again um, when it comes to politicians we feel ah, they just want to grab power and hold power right but when it's happening within us um, there is always this understanding that um, the person is very um, qualified. Not just qualified, they have a vision mm. and they believe that they are the only ones who can move that vision to where it's supposedly supposed to be before they can step down. So why did you run again? And do you think it's a problem, quote and unquote, mm -hmm. that people would always believe that if they are not there, it will not, it's, it, will, it will be done. Great question. Mm -hmm. And like through my campaign, so I, I ran, a, I think I ran a very exciting campaign. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. And actually one of the questions that I answered in a video mm -hmm. was why are you running again? Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that question was going to come up. And I did have a lot of internal wranglings with myself because as you said, there is a uh, temptation to have this to messiah there. mentality, mm -hmm. you know, like it's me or no one else, mm -hmm. right? Um, but side by side that, there's a whole thing around succession, you know? Um, and my term was two years. Um, I think COVID discounted it by one year, honestly. Okay. Um, and so at that point, I really felt three reasons why I ran again. One was momentum. We finally had gotten momentum after the whole... I got into office February 1st, 2020. COVID happened in March. We literally lost all of 2020. And we're only getting back our Don't momentum try. exactly uh, this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I felt that momentum could easily have been um, lost if I didn't run again. Okay. I think the second reason why I was running again was really around reinforcing foundation. So I not inherited, but I got into the association when we were completely, um, it was a really bad time and a bad place where we were. There was no inclusion. It was just really difficult. Um, and so we, we had started building that bridge. And it just felt like abandoning the project halfway. Mm -hmm. Would I have loved to hand over? Absolutely. You know, new mom. New I mean, baby. I, I exactly. <laughs> I was like, I have a four-month-old. I was like, you know, I can give the classic excuse of, I want to go and focus on my family, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then that excuse didn't really sell because at the time when I became president, I just got him married. So it's like, okay, this same family you did not use as an excuse back then. Why use it now? Um, but I felt like succession wasn't really there. Mm -hmm. um, and the people that I would have felt most comfortable um, handing over handing to, over to uh, were not willing to run. Mm. Yet. At this time, yet, exactly. So it was a timing issue. It was a case of, well, it's two years. It's not really enough time um, and you haven't finished the work that you 
the work of inclusion, which was the big thing that I wanted to do. I'm, I'm, a, bi I'm a big build bridger. Mm. Um, and so bringing so people this together. This is not another campaign, right? Oh, no, no, I understand. But, but it's a valid question. I get what you're it's saying now. But do you is think it a that problem? there is a gap in the kind of leaders that um, visionary leaders can hand over to so that they can just relax and I think watch. there's an intentionality that is required okay. to hand over seamlessly. There is an intentionality required. And in some ins I mean, as is a volunteer organization, nobody's getting paid, mm -hmm. right? So incentives are not, are not easy to, to offer. Okay. It has to be somebody who has both competence, capacity, commitment. and the commitment. Mm -hmm. Because pro bono is hard. Mm. It's really hard. It's, it's taking your time. It's taking your, your skills, your network, all of that. Um, and having that combination is tough. For political office, the incentives can be a bit more juicy, um, a bit more juicy to be honest. And uh, it's a problem that we don't, I mean, we overpay in Nigeria anyway, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but real political leadership, you can never be motivated by money. Mm. It's not the right motivation, right? So, but again, there's money. So, you know, for politics, it's easier because you can say, well, I can make back my campaign money at least mm. uh, and maybe have some impact. For a volunteer organization like ours, it has to be really all about the heart and the commitment and seeing that you can do stuff. Is there a gap? I think so. Okay. Plus, not everybody likes stress. Yes, so there are people that I mean, I've said it after it's this is soft life. After this, <laughs> so I want the soft life. life. That's <laughs> it, <laughs> you know. So, there are people who think about it, they see how much work it is, and they're like, Is it do I, do I really want this stress mm. for my life? Mm. Maybe not. And so, they would rather support, they would rather, you know, um, and donate, really commit. but I don't want to be the front line, line. leader that gets mm. called in the middle of the night when you know stuff Things goes wrong, wrong. Mm -hmm. right so there's also a level of selflessness that you need uh, to be able to run for these things in Africa I think there is definitely a power holding problem mm -hmm. and as a person I have to be very honest I debated it I was like Kemi are you sure this is not a mosaic mentality are you sure and I, I debated it extensively no, but for before okay, let me I, let before I mm -hmm. actually said it so but the, it is a problem mm. it is a problem that a lot of times people don't want to leave power because the perks are great mm. and in places where there's not a lot of you know rule of law and real corporate governance and i'm not just talking about political uh, leadership also within corporates right mm. when there's no real governance and you know you're amassing wealth and all of that it's tough for people to want to step step away from that okay yeah. i like um the direction that you're coming from uh kemi because you mentioned about vision and um succession we got my attention now, there's this quote that says that leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. And the kind of reality that I see with leadership is succession plan, where you're able to raise leaders that can take over. So there is a continuity in mm -hmm. whatever the vision mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. How do we begin to sensitize young people? Because it is a huge gap, like Ua had rightly said earlier. How do we begin to deliberately and intentionally infuse the the to infuse the value of leadership in young people as we prepare them for succession it's tough again the incentives are not great so right now as a young person you're thinking survival in right. nigeria like your base, if you look at the Maslow hierarchy of needs, mm -hmm. you just want to live mm -hmm. and just be okay. Mm. And it, to, to, a, to aspire to leadership, you need to rise up that. Above and Exactly, survival above mentality. survival. And then start thinking about significance mm. and start thinking about service mm. and start thinking legacy and start mm. thinking, you know, giving back and all of that. If you're not, if your, your basic needs are not met, it is tough to start thinking giving back. To be, and that's the honest truth. And so, in a, in a in a society like ours, in our economy, where um, you know what more than sixty or seventy percent live under the poverty under the poverty line, the majority of people are just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And so, to come to the point of you know beginning to demand selflessness and mm -hmm. beginning to demand service is it's a bit unfair. Because people are just trying to survive. And that scarcity, there's also a bit of, there's a scarcity mentality. So even the people who then finally decide, okay, I'm going to run for office, 
are not running because not they want sincere, to serve. Out of the sincerity of the heart. They are not running because they want to. They are not, okay, they are not all running. Some people have built their war chest. I keep saying, you know, I might run for office, but I need to have my war chest ready. Mm. Otherwise, you'll be tempted. Mm. You will be tempted. Because when you literally don't have your basic needs met, the temptation to dip into the cookie jar is very high. Mm. And so people, there are people who, you know, they stay in corporates, they stay um, in business, build their war chest, you mm. know, have enough such that there's no bribe that is big enough to tempt them they to actually well go there. Oh, no, there, 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 go there and there's, there's, there's greed. <laughs> then it's greed, well. right? Because then it's like, how much money is enough for you? Mm. Right? That, then that was your number. Mm. Is if it's $10 million that's enough for you and you have $10 million, every extra. Well, you know, with more money comes more needs. But I was going to say, um, I was going to ask you, um, um, Kem, because we're talking institutions here. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, when Elsie and Norma talked about succession and all of that, what came to my mind is if we've built a successful institution, mm -hmm. right, that has almost like an auto-run system, yep. anybody can just come in, plug, plug and, play. and play. The way Dubai runs, you know, the way, if you, if you look at their history, they, you, don't, you can't come out, there's a 500-year there's a plan. So when you are coming in, you're coming in to follow the plan. So the weak institutions that we have, how is that affecting us? Then secondly, if we build successful people, as a leader, shouldn't success of your citizens, the individual now, shouldn't that be part of the checklist for your success <laughs> as a leader? Yes, because Ideally. if we keep having hungry people, like you rightly said, all over the place, how then can we build a successful... We can't build a successful in institution hunger. with hungry people. Absolutely. Because there will still be somebody still that will look away. Instead of flagging down a building permit to say, this cannot fly, yeah. they will look away so that something will come into their pocket. So how do we tie that up? So two things. Let me, let me answer the first question around um, institutions, right? Dubai and... Successful countries attract their best into public service. Right. And public service here is not title holders, it's the civil service, mm. the workforce. Yeah. In countries where things work and they have strong institutions, their best are the ones in yeah. there. And so they run a meritocracy mm. where it's not federal character, it's not because you are from here or this is the yeah. color of your skin yeah. or whatever. Yep. They take the most competent people and those people then build Absolutely. strong institutions. institutions. Because yes, you can have a, a Dora who, who's pushing, but she, alone, her, she's not going to go and team. inspect all oh. warehouses at the she same has time. She her subordinates. She needs her subordinates. And exactly. if they're not cooperating, Still and then problem. even if she goes out, there's somebody that is in procurement. Mm. There's somebody that is, you know, giving contracts to somebody. There's somebody who's leaking the itinerary. Yes, and the secrets. Giving intelligence to the fraudsters or the, the criminals. So go through yeah. this route. They're coming to yeah. rape exactly. mm -hmm. This is the reason why your institution has to be strong. So we have to attract the best. The civil service is underpaid. That's the honest truth in mm. Nigeria. And so the people go into the civil service when they have no other options. And you cannot build strong institutions that way. In other places, they, the government hire, it's a pride right. to work in the government. Right. It means that you're the smartest in your class. It means competent. that you're competent. Integrity. Because it's so competitive to yeah. get into the civil service. Here, it's the other way around. It's people that didn't get into banks, didn't get jobs, you know. That then or say, people that have ulterior motives. They are there to choose Ulterior one. motives. Or Ghost they have, exactly, or they have an uncle and the uncle mm -hmm. has said, oh, you know, I will settle you mm. by giving you a job in the civil service. Mm. Those are the people that are running the institutions. I have seen instances where the minister is excellent, excellent, great technocrat, understands the issues, great leader. But every other person in, that, in, in, the, the, institution. in the institution is working actively against this vision. Mm. It's tough. And so why our institutions are weak is because we don't attract the best talent. Mm. Why don't we attract the best talent? Because the incentives, again, are not there. If, you know, I, you're a graduate, you're a first class graduate, and you, you put all the, all the offers on the, the table. table, honestly, 
you will go to tech, <laughs> you will go to financial <laughs> services, you will go to... The government can never match up to that. Okay, so talking about leadership and institutions, I mean, I have to give kudos to your association and... Um, the school you're the from. The school. Because mm -hmm. I see the support, yes. I see a lot going on, and sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I graduated from this school, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah, so kudos. <laughs> really. <laughs> oh, Please go, I'm, I'm, I'm nice. ready to collapse. <laughs> um, but again... Um, this is happening because of a level of cooperation. I mean, mm. I'm not in that space, but I can tell, right? And I also think that uh, you have to have a level of value or a value of a leader to be a good follower. Yeah. And I feel like I see a lot of that in that space. Is there some form of leadership training that goes on in Convenance University? That's one. And secondly, um, how do we begin to have institutions that are not necessarily so expensive? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about covenants in the sense of what I mean. If you want to leadership train yourself now for leadership and want to go, trust me, you're seeing like 500k, yeah, 400,000. Yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, it's small money for some people, but we need this across board. Um, how can we have that kind of institution where people understand that leadership is for self first before you can lead the next person and yeah. also being a good follower? you have to have the value. Yeah, there is definitely leadership training in Covenant University. Okay. And I think it, it's, again, back to that first quote, an institution is the extended shadow of one individual, mm -hmm. right? So uh, Covenant University is essentially an extension of the chancellor, uh, Dr. David Oedeko. So it's doctor when I call him chancellor, right? Mm -hmm. And he's a very visionary person. He understands uh, the value of human life. He understands dignity of labor. He understands the things. And those things were inculcated in us mm. as we went through. Like the curriculum of Covenant, there are special courses that were curated, uh, Total Man Concept and entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial Development Studies. And so there are a lot of um, entrepreneurs out of Covenant as well. Mm. But I'll focus on TMC. And actually, there's another course called uh, Leadership Development that came in after I left, uh, where they really teach you about first vision, purpose, mm -hmm for yourself as an individual, mm. and then they help you elevate your thinking beyond just you, my food, mm -hmm. my drink, mm -hmm. my clothing, mm -hmm. my shelter. How do you elevate beyond that and actually start thinking, what impact am I, am I going to make in the world? Because honestly, God did not just put us here just to eat, drink, and be merry. Mm -hmm. It's part of it. Not to dorime. But <laughs> <laughs> not to only dorime, yes. right? Yeah. I mean, Solomon said it. It is, you know, vain to walk and not eat the fruit of your labor. You mm. should eat, drink, and be merry. It is the gift of God. Mm. However, you're also made for a purpose. Mm -hmm. You are here to add value, to solve problems. Mm -hmm. to, and that's the orientation that we have. So how do you replicate that across yeah. board? Yeah. I mean, NUC, for example, again, institutions, mm. right? NUC has taken some of the curriculum, I'm aware, and has taken it to some schools. Some schools have come to say, Teach us your ways, mm. right? Yeah. Incorporate it in their Perfect. curriculum, right? So there's some schools that actually offer it, and Covenant did give it out to say, well, this is well, our this is fantastic. It means that ours, if we begin yes. to replicate those models oh, into absolutely. secondary schools, exactly. primary schools, exactly. up until universities, exactly. this leadership, this institution that we're talking about will truly get there. But let's take some comments from our audience. Norma, quickly, we oh. ran out of time. Oh, yes, we have. Oh, wow. Oh, we have. Okay, right. so, okay, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, good evening, ladies. An institution can only be as strong as the people determined yeah. to make it work mm -hmm. well. Um, it's, it's almost impossible to find a passionate and visionary leader that is not proactive. In Nigeria and Africa, how proactive are our leaders? Mm -hmm. And that's from Benson. Thank you, Benson. All right, so this one's from Isaac Olatunde, and he says, leadership? Impact on building successful institution and people, great matter is what you put forth today. Nigeria is focused on power and not on leadership. The mm. leadership that will have impact on building institution and people must reflect empathy, mm -hmm. confidence, integrity, mm. accountability. Are these ingredients seen in what we call leadership in Nigeria today? It is possible to get it right. It is mm. possible. And you're, 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 you're right around... We need to start early. So, for example, um, we have an NGO. The Al Alumni Association has an NGO called the Hope Foundation. Mm -hmm. And one of the core things that we do is it's actually leadership. leadership training for secondary school. Great. Mm -hmm. So we have a summer camp that's a leadership summer camp. It's free. So mm -hmm. we have people who actually sponsor these secondary school kids to come there. Because if you don't start early, mm -hmm. 
it gets hard. Yeah. It gets very, very hard. Mm. People form. They're set in their they're ways. They're set in their already. ways. And it's so hard to unlearn survival, greed, mm. grabbing, all of those True. things, right? And self-centeredness. It's very hard to unlearn it when you are right in the middle of the survival in uni. Absolutely. Mm. Right? So we do have that program where we do, where we train um, secondary school kids. We put them in a summer camp every year. And we're actually 10 years old this November, which is oh, very exciting. Awesome. 10 years old this November. We've been doing it for years. I used to take time off work in to August teach. to be able to teach I'd love for to two volunteers. weeks. Well, oh, absolutely. You know, um, so, so yeah, we have to start early. Uh, start early. Start early. You know, we ran out of topics. Now you are sending your message. <laughs> yeah. Let, uh, night, our leadership is a scarce commodity in our country today because we are governed by rulers, not leaders. This is from Rafael Okori in Zaria. BC says, good evening, ladies. To build a successful institu institution and people, there should be systematic checks to monitor and access performance. Mm -hmm. You already know if you're doing well using those um, indices. There, there, there have been cases of highly placed individuals accused of high level of corruption, but were not able to exhibit such traits in their previous organization due to those structures Checks, yeah. in place. Strong institutions. Strong institutions. Absolutely. Mm. We would love to have you back again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin, for Thank making our time to be, be with us. Thank you, Norma. <laughs> Thank, Thank, Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Norma. Thank you, Elsie Godwin. All right, so before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram. It's at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further. And um, we're planning a giveaway to say thank you to you for believing in us as the Waze brand and following the conversation. Do well to follow us and um, keep the conversation coming. All right, so if you missed today's quote, here it is again. The task of leadership is not to put greatness into humanity, but to elicit it, for the greatness is already there. That's your job. Just bring it out. It's already mm. there. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.